this is my first time playing at Format. And um, was it mean to play at a festival like this? Well, it's 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 amazing because I have a lot of friends, Malian musicians playing here, and I heard a lot about the festival, so I was so excited when they invited me, and it's. Like it's the first time and I hope we'll come again because it was really fun. Yeah, I was living in the same neighborhood and actually uh, Mariam grew up in the neighborhood of my grandmother. And she was telling me a month ago that when she was very young, she used to go and sing to my grandmother and she would give her some coins and encourage her. And yeah, Mali, uh, as musicians, we are all very close and connected. Yes, and Salif was a big help. Salif and the rail band of Bamako, they really taught me a lot of things and then I moved on and learned other things by on my own. When I was when I was 14 I started to write my own songs but in my family I am the only one who's a musician. And so I wanted to meet someone who can, who could lead me. And so I went to Salif Keita. I knocked at his, at his door, and he asked me to sing. And then he sent me to the rail band of Bamako, and I started learning with them. And it was an amazing experience. And then I went with um, some of my friends. We discovered hip hop, American hip hop, but we wanted to do hip hop in our own language with our own traditional sound and our values because we the message what is really interesting in hip-hop when it started it's it was about um, expressing the social issues and we didn't recognize ourselves in those issues because it was a complete different culture yeah. but we liked the sound and we liked the the way what that represents. yeah what it represents so we started to learn how to do in in our own language so. <laughs> I wanted, because I started with traditional Malian music, but I wanted to um, to find my own sound, and I wanted to add something more modern. And we are influenced today, you know, with internet. You 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 can listen to music from Tokyo, from London, from everywhere. And for me, it was interesting to just mix hip hop with traditional Malian music with electronic sounds. It wasn't easy because I didn't have any example. I couldn't say, okay, oh, I like this. Maybe I can try something like this. I didn't have anything uh, that sounds like what I wanted to do. So I spent three years working and trying. Yeah, I started in Bamako and then I went to London and I went to Paris. So I traveled a little bit and I, I worked this sound and I think, I think Bambara, because that's my language. Even though it's more um, technically, it's more complicated because you really need to have the words and pronounce the word and make it sound very poetic. But um, that's my language, so I, I and I've learned how to do that when I was a teenager. So it's easier for me. I wanted to play with the music um, and if you don't understand the language you don't know that I'm talking about something so heavy. I wanted to play with this to find a cool balance between the heavy topic and the music. I want people to dance because music has been banned from Timbuktu and I wanted people to dance to enjoy the music because that's the only way for us to you know to 
to stop this. Because Timbuktu is one of our most important cities and Timbuktu is not free, so it's, it's, uh, it really shows what's going on. And, and for me, coming from the north of Mali, it's, it's very difficult. Music has been banned for, from Timbuktu. For, it's, it started four years ago. Yeah, it's crazy. Music, TV, radios, and kids couldn't even play football. It was a lot of, I have some musicians, friends, who had to flee the north of Mali because they were not allowed to play and they were, you know, in danger. Well, for me, having a platform is having a voice. I can speak for those who don't have a voice. And the social issues that I'm talking about is about women and girls because there's so much to do. We are, we're not equal yet. And that is everywhere in the world, not just in Mali. But uh, in Mali, we have other issues that are really, that are really need to stop now, like, female genital mutilations. That's something, that's a topic that I've been working on and fighting against for the last 11 years. And I went through female genital mutilation when I was a kid, when I, was, I wasn't even five years old. Uh, my parents were against it. And one day my mother was not at home and my grandmother's sister took me and did it to me. And then so, in my family it was, it wasn't a taboo. Uh, and my parents are very feminist. My dad is the biggest feminist that I know. Well, it was, it, you're devastated. It's, it's very hard, but they turned it into something uh, powerful. Like you can do whatever you choose to do and being a woman shouldn't be um, something that holds you back. And so I've been doing that. And so in my music and also with some organizations on the ground, I, I work with people and try to try to do something right. And so my music, I also use my platform to speak about what is going on in Africa, in Mali, and with the war going on in Mali, it's been four years that it's, we are, the north of Mali is invaded by terrorism. And it's, uh, it's a topic that is very hard. <laughs> Working with uh, the United Nations and they've been working hard and involving governments and a lot of organizations to end female genital mutilation in 2030. So that's in 15 years. It's, it seems long, but it's actually very short because to change mentality, it takes some time. So it's a, it's a great goal and we'll be all working hard to make that happen. Music is so powerful because it touches you so deep that it's, for me, it was a way to, you know, uh, find my place in this world. And for a lot of people, music is, it's, uh, in French, they say, uh, la musique adoucit les mœurs. It means that it softens you and it, um, it's feelings, music, and it's one of the most important things in the world. <laughs>